with all the talk about red states and blue states and who is the real America and America first, I wanted to offer a different perspective on who America is at all. It's a little history lesson about American expansion and the American present by way of a party trick I've been practicing as I finish up my new book about the U.S. territories. So I want to tell our story with a little bit of a different spin than what you're used to. And I want to do it all in five minutes. So here we go. Now this is how we picture the USA, right? It stretches from sea to shining sea, from the prairies of the Midwest, to the industry of the Great Lakes, all five of them, historic towns of New England, the big cities of the East Coast, Chesapeake Bay and the Carolinas, Florida and the alligators, Louisiana Delta, kind of hard to draw, Texas and the Rio Grande, and the hippie lands of California and the Pacific Northwest. So that's the USA. It's a bit imperfect, but that's who we are. Now, before Europeans arrived, of course, this was all the home of various indigenous people. Up here, in the Northeast. In New York, we have the Seneca. In New Jersey, the Lenape. In Virginia, the Powhatan. In the Carolinas, the Catawba. And in Florida, the Seminoles. That's the USA in 1790. But even then, we had plans to keep growing. And the template for that was something called the Northwest Ordinance. And it basically says, as we grow, new lands will be territories first, and then through a gradual process of adding local courts and governments, they'll become states. Pretty straightforward, usually just takes a few decades, um, but just keep this in mind, we've always been a nation of both states and territories, then and now. And the founding fathers bickered about how we should expand, whether we should expand. Thomas Jefferson was a skeptic, that is, until he was elected president, and then in 1803, he signs off on the Louisiana Purchase, doubling the size of the USA. Always forget that a little bit. Now these questions about expansion and how a territory becomes a state are some of the biggest national issues for decades. In 1844, James Polk is elected president on a promise to annex Texas, which it does through a war with Mexico, and also Oregon Territory, which he does through a treaty with the British. But even as we're growing, the nation is also fracturing right? A war is coming. Here in Bleeding, Kansas, in 1854, settlers literally fight about whether this territory will allow slavery once it becomes a state. And now things get a little bit more obscure, because American farmers at the time are struggling. They desperately need fertilizer, and they know where to find it, but it's in all these little islands scattered around the oceans covered in petrified bird poop. In 1856, Congress passes the Guano Islands Act, and American ships set out to claim all these little specks in the sea and start mining. Even today, we hold about a dozen of them. Now, back on the continent, it's the era of reconstruction and more expansion. In 1867, we purchase Alaska. <laughs> Looks terrible, sorry, Alaska. Uh, and we also keep adding states, including Idaho and Wyoming in 1890. And by this point, we really do stretch from sea to shining sea. But we're still, not, we're still not the global power that we want to be. And to achieve that, we look to our European competitors, and we decide to follow their lead. We are going to become an empire. In 1893, American businesses violently overthrow the sovereign nation of Hawaii. And in 1898, there's the Spanish-American War, which is brief, but consequential, because it marks the end of the Spanish uh, era of dominance and the beginning of ours. From the Spanish, we take Puerto Rico in the Caribbean, as well as the Philippines, sorry, Philippines, that also looks terrible, uh, and the island of Guam. Both of these are in the Western Pacific. In 1900, we take over American Samoa in the South Pacific. And in 1917, we purchase the Danish West Indies, which you know as the U.S. Virgin Islands of St. Thomas, St. John, and St. Croix. In 1941, we lose ground when Japan invades the Aleutian Islands of Alaska, as well as the island of Guam, which Japan occupies until 1944, but Uncle Sam comes storming back and also takes over the neighboring Northern Mariana Islands, which become an important 
uh, military base for the rest of the war. After the war, Philippines become independent, Alaska and Hawaii become states, and in 1976, US, the Northern Marianas become the last territory to join the USA. So that, all of that is who we are. The United States and territories and DC and Guano Islands of America and the Pacific and the Caribbean stop the clock. Now, unlike all the previous territories, these ones aren't on the path to statehood and they don't have the full protections of the Constitution for reasons of politics and xenophobia and a series of Supreme Court cases that are 100 years old and really need to be overturned. But even if we forget about them, even if we don't realize that these are the real America as much as any state, the territories have been so important to our story. Their ports made us an economic and political or, uh, and military powerhouse, and they've contributed to our pop culture from American Samoa's tattooing traditions to Puerto Rico's salsa music, and their citizens have fought for our nation at rates higher than the states. And even Alexander Hamilton came from St. Croix before moving to the US. The territories put America on the map, and they're still part of our map, even if we forget about them. But without them, you're not seeing the full picture of who we are and how we got here.